well, this was supposed to be a video about um, thanking uh, those that have supported the cause um, for uh, the Equal Justice Initiative that, uh, that I started a couple of weeks ago and like the people that have contributed and, and taken the classes, people I've been able to catch up with. So this video was intentionally supposed to be for that. And, you know, it's turned into something else. And, you know, I wonder, I'm in, a, I'm in a unique situation and I don't often get a chance to talk about this because um, I don't necessarily feel like one, that I have the, uh, the platform or the place yet. Um, and, uh, you know, it's not really anybody else's problem, exactly. But um, what I do want to do is what I wanted to do for this. and. And I don't think that Instagram is a place, I don't think Facebook is a place for these types of things, but I'm gonna do this today because um, <clears throat> because I think for a lot of people, there is a lot of deep down um, anxiety and anguish and hurt and pain and in addition to that, there is a whole lot of indifference and um, contentment and uh, blissful ignorance um, that makes all of those other feelings particularly hurtful, more so than they already are. And what I mean by that is this, I've been in the fitness industry for a really long time now, and it's been my job to help people better themselves, to secure these small wins over the course of the day, whether that be in the morning or the afternoon, to, to, to snowball into something better for the rest of the day, right? And, and those small wins contribute to other parts of your life, whether that be your job or your relationship and or your physical fitness. That has been my job, my focus. Now, to give you a little bit of context, I work in San Francisco in a pretty uh, wealthy part of the city, and I can go a week or two without actually seeing another black person. So that's problem number one, but like, let's be on that. As you can imagine, that puts me in a really interesting situation, right? Because I see the oppression. I had the talk when I was a kid. I've had firsthand experience of the type of bullshit that we're seeing on TV. Some of us are seeing on TV first-hand knowledge. I've had my ass kicked by a cop. I've been in cuffs. I know what it's like, so I can speak from experience. And you'll have to forgive me if there's a long pause because I'm, I'm trying to, I wrote, I've written this down a million times and every single time it just, it changes and it morphs into something else. So I'm gonna give this to you exactly how it's coming off the top of my head. And, if this isn't something that you're into, if you're not curious about how this particular black person feels about what's happening right now, then yo, turn that shit off, okay? I'm not gonna be mad at you. Um, for those that say that there is no such thing as systemic racism, I'm gonna try to boil this down to the simplest terms so that you can understand. How is it that African Americans make up 12, 13% of the population, but 60% of the prison population? And on the East Coast, on the West Coast, in the South, in the Midwest, all of the numbers, all of the ratios are within three or four or five percent of each other. Now, do I believe that all these police departments pick each other, pick the phone up and they call each other and they say, hey, 
make sure you lock up an extra five or six black people today? No, I don't think so. But I think it's a hell of a coincidence that across the entire country, somehow, some way we managed to be 60 to 65% of the prison population. That sounds like systemic. Black folks are known and it's been proven to get seven times the penalty for the exact same crimes that white people commit. Seven times. So for the white person that gets a year, we get seven. For the white person that gets two, we get 14. Again, I'm trying to just break it down, right? Keep it simple. Why is it that every time a black person has an interaction with a police officer and it ends poorly, which is more often than not, the first thing the media or anybody does is they vilify the black person as if they were doing something wrong and deserved what they got. What you don't realize is that you are justifying the behavior of that police department and that police officer. You, by accepting their answer for why they did what they did, you in turn give them permission to do it again. So yes, sure, you're not there. And sure, that's across the country. And sure, I don't know. And sure, I was in a bad neighborhood. But by you not being upset about it and letting it go, lets that police officer know that he can do it again. Imagine, this is a word that I've, imagine your doppelganger, someone that looks exactly like you, just like you, your twin. And as you're walking up on your twin, a police officer runs up and shoots your twin, dead in the street, blood everywhere. And then if not for the only images that you have in your own head, you turn on the TV and you get to watch that murder over and over and over again. And no, it's not you, but it's somebody that looks a lot like you. Imagine what that would do to you. But then imagine you turn your TV on the next day and it's another one of your doppelgangers. Someone again that looks just like you, but they die in a slightly different way. They're shot in the back. or they're uh, slammed on their head in handcuffs, or four police officers kneel on their neck until there's no more breath left in their bodies. Not black bodies, white bodies. Imagine white bodies, let's just be real, because black people see that shit every day. Imagine there's a white person, and every time you turn that TV on, it's a cop killing a white person. Oh shit, that's a problem, right? That's a problem. You can't even imagine it, you can't even, Fathom it. It doesn't even make sense. You can't even compute it into your head. That, that right there, that right there. That's the racism. Like that's the part that we're talking about. You can't even comprehend the idea that the police would beat up on white people and drag them through the streets and leave their dead body bleeding for hours before they get attended to or their lifeless body staying there in handcuffs or or cops kicking a white person's door down and shooting them in their bed in their home in the middle of the night you can't even conceive it it doesn't even make sense but i get to see it every day every day every fucking day you know i've been working on a project to address this specific problem and I can't keep up. I can't write fast enough. I can't film fast enough. Every day I've got proof. I've got documentation of the mistreatment of black people all 
day long. And I've dedicated my life to making people feel good. And I get to watch black people, people that look like me, chased down in the street and shot by a bunch of hillbillies with shotguns. Cops lying about the circumstances of an arrest, lying about whether or not they felt like they were in harm's way. I've seen white folks get pulled over, get out of the car, talk shit, spit in a cop's face. And I've seen black folks choke to death over selling loose cigarettes. I was gonna get on here and I was gonna start naming off names. I don't have, can't remember them all. I don't wanna read them off a list. The other day I was talking about one and I was like, well, it was kinda like this other one and then it was like this other one, wait, what was that one? That one, the other, that one, no, not two years ago, three years ago. No, not that one, four years ago, not that one. I've been experiencing these things. Black folks have been experiencing these things for our entire lives. It's a, a part, it's a part of, of our lives. It's a part of our society. I can't imagine what a white mother would say to her child or what she would do if she knew that she was sending her child off out into a out to and out into the jungle every day. And you know what? And the crazy part about it is, and this is the part that fucks, this is the part that gets me the most, and not necessarily gets me the most, but this is the part that I don't think people understand. If there are no repercussions for these police officers, why would they change their behavior? And, and, and why do we keep assuming that these things aren't intended to be, aren't intended to happen? Guess what? When rich folks want tax breaks, they got tax breaks. When there needed to be a bailout for the banks that were stealing money, there was a bailout. Your money, poor people's money. Look, I'm, I don't wanna go off into a tangent. I don't wanna go off into a tangent. I just wanna keep this on this particular thing. Black folks don't have a history of blown up churches. You know who has a history of blown up churches? White folks. Black folks don't have a history of trafficking in child pornography or human trafficking. You know who does? White folks do. Black folks don't have a reputation or haven't been known to blow up federal buildings. You know who does? White folks do. Mass shootings. Black folks don't do mass shootings. In fact, where's the proof of a group of black people getting together and rushing on into that white neighborhood and robbing people? When has that ever happened? Where's the proof of something like that happening? There isn't any. So black people are made to be this boogeyman to justify how people treat them, how police treat them. Go ahead, type in, go into YouTube and type in white woman beaten by cops. Go ahead and see what you find. Last time I did it, a white person didn't show up until like the 16th video. White people are allowed to have dignity. They don't show white people getting arrested. They don't show people dying. They don't show white people get being murdered. They only show black people being criminals, criminalized, beaten, 
shot, kill, murder, black bodies. They only show black bodies doing those things. They don't show white folks being killed like that. They don't, they give white people dignity. Why can't I have dignity too? Why can't I earn a living? Why can't I buy and drive a nice car? Why can't I doing these things? Yo, black people just want to live. We just want to live. reparations, blah, blah, blah. You know what? We can have those conversations. You know what? Yes, I feel like we're owed a lot, but guess what? First things first, you got to stop shooting us in the street. That's, that's, that's the number one. Number one, stop you. The idea that Brianna's Ta Brianna Taylor's murderers are still walking around the streets. How many of these police officers actually, how many of these police officers murdered, shot someone down in cold blood for no reason? You wanna fuck their head up? How many other African-Americans committed suicide in police custody over the past 10 or 15 years? All of these police statements read the same. I was afraid for my life. He reached for my gun. We don't reach for the gun. We're never close enough to reach for the gun. The narratives that are being pushed about black people and the circumstances of their deaths are lies. The only thing that's been proven to be consistent is the fact that the police department lie about the details. The arrest report for Breonna Taylor, they, they didn't even say that she was shot. Every time I turn on TV, I got somebody that's looking like me murdered by police. Imagine what that does to a human being. I'm a well-adjusted black man. Imagine what it's doing to these kids. That man, Clark, that Mr. Clark, God damn it, he got shot with his kids in the car. So like, are you okay with it? Like, are you okay with it? Like, is that okay for you? I mean, and if it is, God bless you. You know what? Like, God, there's a, there's a special place for you. Put yourself in the shoes of an individual that is just in their bed, minding their own business. Door gets kicked in and shots are fired and you end up shot in your bed, in your home. Government overreach, all of my Republicans out there, all of my small government, where are you right now? Look, like I said, my intent was never, I didn't really feel like doing anything like this, but the thing of it is, is every time I turn on this TV and I see another person that looks like me being shot down in the street, Let's just say, let's just say I'm, be, I'm, I'm getting tired. I'm tired of being a punching bag. I'm tired of my people being punching bags. I'm tired of cheering up a bunch of people that give zero fucks about me and then people that look like me. And 
it's making it very difficult for me to do my job. It's making making things very difficult for me to, to look these people in the face. And not all of you guys, not all of you. And I, and I don't, I'm not holding anybody responsible specifically for any of this that's happening. I guess more than anything, it's like, I want you to understand my, my, my mindset. Because every, every other day, I'm watching people that look like me mistreated by the police, the people that are supposed to protect us. So, it's just a thought. I'm working on something. I'll probably be announcing it by, the, by next week. But in the meantime, I just had to say this, like, you know, if you know... African-American people, if you have African-American people in your life and you are in a position to help, whatever way you see fit, and that's not, that doesn't mean give them money, that doesn't mean, that means just support whatever it is that they're trying to do. Because unfortunately, we've set this up so that black folks can't win on their own. It's been set up to where you don't get to where you want to be unless you get the okay from a white person. And granted, that's not final, right? There's always exceptions to the rule. And for those of you that want to say, well, there's rich black people. Yeah, they're either bounce a ball or they're dancing on stage. That's where black wealth is. Black wealth is either on a stage or on a field. And I don't know that that that, that much different than slavery was. And instead of Rangers and Texas Rangers chasing down and the and the and the 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 folks that used to chase slaves to give the slave owners their property back. We've given them guns and badges and we call them police officers. Just guess what? Yo, the only time black people are protected by police officers is when the person that's attacking the black people is a black person also, a person of color also. That's the only time black people are, are, are protected by the police. It's when the person that did them wrong is African American or colored also. That's when black people get just a little bit of support. But if it comes down to just black people only, we're not protected by the police. And that shit needs to change. Anyways, this is way longer than it was supposed to be. This is not my intent. If you're still here, thank you. 